Okay, so I'm in Maya now. First thing we want to do when we're modeling is to create a cylinder. Um, you can go up here to your polygon shelf. You can go to create polygon cylinder, or you can be the fancy cool way that I like to do and go shift, right click, and then move to the left and you've got polygon cylinder there. Now a record is about 12 inches long. Well, it is 12 inches long. Um, it helps sometimes to do everything to scale. Um, it's good to keep this in mind because if you're using real-time physics or if you're using it in a game, it's going to be to the same scale as the other objects in the game. And also if you're working in virtual reality or augmented reality, um, scale really does matter. Um, and with cloth simulation, all this kind of stuff. So let's set it to inches just to be certain what we're doing. So 12 inches, well, that's actually the measure in diameter. So the radius of that is going to be six inches. That's our general shape. Let's keep it quite high resolution, but not too high. So I'm going to put this up to 50. It does go higher than that, but I'm just going to keep it like there. Um, we need to add a, a subdivision height. So what I'm doing here is middle clicking um, and dragging. So you can actually, if you have this element selected, you can by middle hold middle clicking and dragging, you can choose how many subdivisions you have in there. <clears throat> We're also going to need a few caps, a few subdivisions on the caps. So let's put let's put eight just to be safe. Okay, and how thick is is a record? Let's just say or well, one inch. Let's just say let's just give it a try. See what looks right. 0.1 maybe a little bit less 0.7 yeah that feels right yeah. what i like to do is work with anti-aliasing on everything looks a bit nicer it feels a bit nicer and you tend to feel a little bit more creative when you haven't got lots of blocky sort of lines happening everywhere so i usually keep that on okay next thing we, oh yeah, first thing, let's, um, yeah, we're going to be modeling kind of in symmetry, but not. So uh, we just need to create one half of the record and then we're going to duplicate it because a model is symmetrical from the, you know, from the vertical axis. So I'm going to select this face. Well, you know how to go to face, hopefully. So right click and select face, click this first face, then hold down shift and double click and that will select all of those around the edge um, I'm pressing 4 and 5 to go to wireframe shaded mode so then we just need to delete them and then delete this bottom line here and then you've got the top half of the record that's a much quicker way than zooming in here and mm, God, that could take you forever so little tricks like that really speed up your workflow Okay, so now we only have to do one one half, which is going to make things a lot simpler. So we can start with the center hole, Just double click that edge and we can drag it in. We can get a feel for the proportion up there. If we go to top view, that space to switch between viewports. We put that to about there. Okay, it looks okay for now. Um, if we can go on uh, wireframe on shaded and then we can always see how many how many polys we're using and where everything is okay now we're going to start on the label the actual proportion of well the actual size of a label is going to depend you know it's, it's it's a certain width okay i'll tell you what i'll do okay okay for the label we need to make sure the label's the right size. Um, you can get schematics of uh, records and record labels and widths everywhere. If you do a Google search, you can probably find it somewhere. Um, but just for simplicity, I'm going to grab a generic vinyl image, 12 inch vinyl, let's put 12 inch vinyl from Google. 12 inch record vinyl. And then hopefully we can find one with the right yeah, proportions there. We're not going to be copying this, but we're going to be using this as a scale reference. That's all. 
So no textures are going to be used on that. Just the, yeah, just the measurements. So, okay, we're in top view. Yeah. So to import that picture, we're going to import the picture. So go here. I'll do that again. To image plane, and then find that image that we've just found. Where is it? Loads of stuff here. Yeah. And um, what's it called? This one. Okay. Let's make this bigger. Do it fits. So now we know that basically this line here is going to be in line with that line there. And um, a lot of records have a little bump, or well, most of them, they tend to vary depending on whether they're an LP or if they're a a single um but from my memory most of my records have a little bump that go around about that width yeah okay this is like partly with references but partly from just knowing that i've knowing what records look like because i've spent half my life with records in my hands so okay we can hide that for now actually let's delete it let's be confident and delete it we don't need that anymore there's the center. It'll probably come in a little bit more. Okay. And now right click, go to face. This is a, a little detail that it makes a lot of difference. And see, so yeah, I've done the same trick there. Click on the face, double click on the one next to it to select the ring or the loop. And then I'm holding down shift, right click, and then extrude face. And then let go on extrude face. <coughs> And then you can lift that up. Sometimes your default extrude will be set to a ridiculously high number, which you don't need. So like in my case it is. So I'm just gonna put that down to one. We only need one division there. And then bring that down. Another thing, if you want more control, is just to go back to the transform tool, press W, and then you don't need to worry about the extrude feature, but that that's not a problem on this uh, in this case, really. So I'm going to bring this edge in a bit. So double click select and then R to go to your scale tool. Scale that in. And then bevel. I don't think it needs a bevel. Let's try to just smooth it, soften that edge. See how that looks. I'll tell you what I'm doing if it works. Yeah. Yeah, that saves a lot of topology and it's such a minor detail no one's really going to notice if you've added some polygons there this is the smoothing this will actually smooth out the normals so the direction of each poly will be affected um, depending on the location of each vertex which is a whole different story something it's helpful to be aware of when you're working with 3d it's not all as you see it on the surface there's more going on under the under the hood as they like to say Bring that out a bit too, a little bit more, and then so I'm doing this. Yeah, to smooth, I'm holding down Shift, right click, and then drag to soften edge. So that'll soften that edge, but the and you can see that edge is is still hard. Right. Okay, so next we need to delete these middle edges here because this is our this is where the spindle thing is going to go. To press F, it'll zoom in on whatever you have selected and then just delete those with the delete key didn't know um cool uh any more details i think the edges of a lot of records so a lot of the cheaper well cheaply produced records have um the edges are quite sharp i mean more expensive albums tend to be quite flat on the edges but you know i like to keep it real Room when I can. So let's yeah, move that out like that. Okay, that's the top surface then. That's pretty much first side done. We can subdivide it if we want. I think we we're not going to subdivide subdivide it because um, it's going to be a kind of game asset. So we, if we keep it low poly, if we can keep it under a thousand or under two thousand polys, that, that's a decent um, that's a decent number of polys. Well, that's a decent number of polygons for 
we're using in, in real-time renderers like Unity or Unreal Engine. So next thing we need to do, mirror geometry, this tool here. Um, we don't want to cut geometry, turn that off, keep it on world, axis to Y. This merge border edge threshold here, this is how far the vertices have to be before it will join them together. So if we keep this quite low, low enough, you know, so if you have it really high, then it will just absorb everything around it. So if I do one, for example, well, see, it won't even go higher than that because it's, it doesn't work that way. But in this case, it's better to keep it 0 0.1. That will merge these edges here, but not these edges. Uh, it has, but okay, 0.01 then. There we go. And then that means these edges should be, yeah, so they're joined. Great. Um, if you don't join them, I'll, I'll show you, I'll show you quickly. Because this matters if you're trying to learn how to use this stuff. We switch this off altogether to zero. And you select that edge, it's not going to be connected. So if you do come to subdividing, it's not going to have the right effect, basically. And uh, it's not one model, it's not one mesh, it's two meshes. So if we go back to mirror, and we change that to 0.01, bam, and then the edge is back. Okay, I hope that wasn't too boring, but I think these things are important because there's a lot of details you need to know when it comes to 3D modeling. Uh, it's like a language, but yeah, it takes time, practice, and persistence, and pain, and persistence, and perseverance. Right. There's your model. Always, uh, I did that without even showing it. It's become such an instinct, so... Uh, what I've done here, okay, here we go, yeah. So I've gone back a few steps so you can see. Um, all your actions are usually kept in the undo history here. Um, this actually builds up, it uses up your processor, your RAM and everything. So you need to delete that when you finish this up, when you've got to a certain point in your modeling. So like now I'm gonna delete history. So you can either go to edit, delete by type, history, or what I would usually do is press Alt, Shift, D. E, and that becomes a bit of a reflex after a while. So just bang, bang, bang. Um, one more thing we need to do, because it's not actually quite finished, is select these two vertices. We need to fill this hole here. And then Shift, right click, bridge. And then click these two edges and then press G. That will repeat the last tool you've used. I put that edge in first because sometimes you get a problem there and it doesn't know which edge to start with. It does in this case, but sometimes you do it too like that and it will, if you select the wrong edge to start, then it will, well, okay. It seems to understand it because it's quite a flat surface, but usually I would do it that way just to be certain. Let's take these edges and soften those. So it's nice and round. And yeah, there you go. There's a model of a record. There you go. I hope that was useful. Please like and subscribe to all of my newspapers. Okay, so that's modeling done. Next, we're going to go on to UV mapping, which is actually more fun than most people think it is when you know how to do it, because it's not as hard as you might think.